Hey, does anybody have a $2 bill for my guy Dan Campbell, the head coach of the Lions? But anyway, Team Keep It Clean, we are here to share my post-game thoughts from the game that we all just finished watching. And we loved, by the way, thank you Ravens, uh, that it happened between the Baltimore Ravens and the Detroit Lions with the Baltimore Ravens winning 38-6. to They dominated this game pretty much from start to finish. And while they did give up that lone touchdown, even though it does look like two field goals, uh, they gave up that lone touchdown to uh, Gibbs, I believe. Um, but the, the Lions were like, all right, we got our touchdown. Let's go for two points. And Geno Stone was like, oh, I gave up the uh, outside leverage on that touchdown run, but I ain't, I ain't giving it up on this one. And Geno Stone said, nope, y'all ain't getting these two points. So enjoy your six. And that was it. That was it. Um, this game, obviously... Everybody was talking about the Baltimore Ravens offense, and it was a beautiful thing to see. Now, you see, remember, they, they scored 28 points in the first half, and I know a lot of the complaints have been, oh, the Baltimore Ravens in the second half, they get so conservative. They scored 28 points in the first half, but in the second half, they just scored 10. Um, so that would be kind of conservative, right? But, see, since they scored so much in the first half, wasn't nobody complaining about the conservativeness in the second, which is fine uh, because they did what they had to do. They made the game so far out of reach that they were able to chill a bit more uh, in the second half. Lamar Jackson in this game, he was amazing. He was amazing. Uh, let's just look at his numbers and then we'll talk about his game. He went 21 for 27, 357 yards, three touchdowns, no picks, no sacks. And no fumbles, too. So shout out to Lamar Jackson because this was just beautiful game from him. Um, just thinking about the touchdowns, I remember on a touchdown to Nelson Aguilar, I thought the play was over. I thought Lamar was about to get sacked. I, I, I did not think that was going to be a touchdown throw. But Lamar Jackson, like Lamar Jackson does, he makes something out of what looks or appears to the human eye to be nothing, but he makes something happen anyway. Um, then... The touchdown to the first touchdown to Mark Andrews, since it was National Tight End Day, Mark Andrews had to really get his. The first touchdown to Mark Andrews, where he uh, he said, I'm getting in this end zone. So he got a bunch of yak and then went and dove, put the ball over the pylon, which was nice. So shout out to Mark Andrews for that. Uh, but then the second, second touchdown to Mark Andrews, I had to apologize because when we were watching the game live and Lamar threw it, I said, Oh, that's too high. That's too high. That's about to go out of bounds. I thought it was going to be incomplete. I thought it was going to go sailing out of bounds. Nope. Perfect pass. Mark Andrews caught it, brought in the end zone, touchdown. So I said, oh, my, my fault, Lamar. My apologies, my friend. So he, he was just on point. Then, of course, Lamar got his rushing touchdown as well, and that was on the first drive of the game. And the way that they set up that rushing touchdown was beautiful because they lined up in a single back formation, and they motioned. They motioned Patrick Ricard to the right side of the offensive line, and y'all know wherever they send Pat Ricard, that's where the run play is going to go. So they motion Pat Ricard to the, the, to the right side of the line, and then Lamar uh, snapped the ball, and he faked it like Gus was, and Gus was looking like he was about to either run up the middle or run to the right side, but Lamar kept it. And then he just walked in for the touchdown pretty much untouched. So we always talk about how football is just as much, actually even more mental than it is physical. Plays like that show it. It, it showed it. it. It was such a, the, the, it was set up perfectly executed perfectly they did exactly what they had to do in this game uh, Lamar Jackson he really 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 trusted his offensive line to the max there were plays where especially in the first half in the first quarter uh where Lamar he would be sitting behind the offensive line and the they would they would be getting a little pressure they would be pushing the offensive line back a bit and they would be really close to Lamar but Lamar was just sitting there like there was nobody around him and just just sitting there and then he'll be oh there goes my receiver right there let me get it to him through the ball perfect pass catch big play Lamar and Lamar just throwing strikes all game. And this has been something with Lamar uh, just really throughout this year. Lamar has really been on point, man. He, he really been throwing a lot of strikes. Now, there was some game, a lot of them got dropped, man, but it's okay. Uh, Ravens are sitting at 5-2 and two right now. Um, nice record in the AFC right now, currently top of the AFC North. Uh, the Browns, they looking like they getting ready to win their game. Uh, unfortunately, thought the Colts were going to pull it. Uh, it's okay. It is what it is. Uh, Steelers are playing right now. Um, and then the Bengals, are they on a bye week? I, f I forgot what's going on with the Bengals. But anyway, uh, Ravens sitting at 5-2, top of the AFC North. So that's a beautiful thing. Um, in this game, the run game, uh, Gus Edwards had 14 carries for 64 yards. Now with him, he averaged 4.6 yards per carry. But <coughs> his average... Probably would have been a lot higher if not for, and we're not complaining, uh, but if not for all the runs at the end of the game when they were just trying to kill the clock. 
Because that's when the um, that's when the Lions they knew Gus Edwards was running. They knew the Ravens were just running out the clock, uh, so they knew Gus wasn't he wasn't gonna be doing anything crazy, nothing like that. So they just kept closing in on the run. So that kept dropping his average a little bit here and there. Um, but he had a good game, got him his touchdown. So that's always nice to see. And Gus, really, the best play from Gus in this game, minus the touchdown, was on that catch where the Ravens were like on their own. I want to say like six yard line, seven yard line. They were within on, within their own ten yard line, and Lamar snapped the ball, did a little scrambling, and then he threw the ball to Gus, and Gus caught it and ran and ran and ran and ran, and I, I didn't realize there wasn't no Lions in front of him for a while, and I was like, hold up, are they really about to take it all the way? Gus about to go home? But now nah, he ended up getting caught, but it was such a great play, and that literally flipped field positions just like that. Uh, and that's what the Baltimore Ravens were doing today. They were getting a lot of people involved, especially early on. Rashad Bateman was involved early on. Uh, not so much toward the end of the game. I know Tyler Huntley did try that, that, that bomb to him, but it didn't work out. It's all good, though. Uh, Odell Beckham Jr., he was involved early on in the game. Odell, today for Odell, it was spin move. Spin move city for Odell Beckham Jr. That's all he was trying to do today. He was trying to hit that spin move on people. Um, trying to come back around and whatnot. So, he again, more and more getting more, more and more comfortable and whatnot, getting more and more loose in this offense, and that's important, man. Todd Munkin had him a good game today, man. Uh, it was National Tight End Day today, so we saw a lot more Isaiah Likely than we are used to. He didn't get involved in – I don't think he caught any passes. I don't think he had any targets either, but I saw that number 80 out there a lot more than we are used to. There were times when um, Gus Edwards, they had him in, in pass protection. They had Justice Hill in pass protection sometimes, and what they would do – uh, they would use them to just have an extra body on Aiden Hutchinson. And, I mean, you can see why because he is a beast. Um, but they were really trying to make sure that they took him out the game. And, I mean, he ain't get no sacks. So, and Ravens ain't give up no sacks. So, that that's crazy. That, that, that That's a beautiful thing. So, shout out to them Ravens. Um, on Lamar Jackson's touchdown run, Ronnie Stanley. Oh, man, he, he it's like he pushed the guy in, into next week. Almost, because if Ronnie Stanley, if he pushed that guy all the way through the end zone and whatnot, he'd probably push him out of the stadium too. Uh, but Ronnie Stanley was doing his thing uh, in this game. Now, uh, speaking of the run game, Justice Hill. Um, Justice Hill, uh, just looking at his numbers, he had four rushes for 46 yards. So the average went crazy. The average went crazy. His longest rush was 27 yards. So uh, most of it came from that. But still, he, he, was, he was going crazy with it. But um, everything really came to a halt for him. When uh, he had fumbled that ball uh, in the red zone, I believe it was in the red zone. Now, thank goodness for Baltimore Ravens defense because Baltimore Ravens defense, they prevented the Lions from scoring uh, after that turnover. So while Justice Hill, his fumble, it took away points from the Baltimore Ravens. It did not give any points to the Detroit Lions. And I mean, speaking of not giving any points to the Detroit Lions, shout out to the Baltimore Ravens defense. Now, before you get into the defense, I got a shout out to StandWithUsClothing.com for this fire varsity jacket. I know a lot of people ask me where I got it from during the stream. It says StandWithUsClothing.com. I'm going to leave the link directly to where you can get your own varsity jacket in the description. Uh, you will love it. I, I guarantee you. It is fit to size. So, you know, I got me a large because I'm a large guy. But um, this is a very, very nice uh, varsity jacket. Um, and for any other items that they have uh, on their store, you can use code you, me, us uh, all together for 40% off. The jacket's not included, but with the jacket, there's some variety because they got a purple and black one. I had to wear this for the Baltimore Ravens today, but they also got a gray and black one that's really nice, and y'all will be seeing that very soon. They also got a white and green, red, uh, and yellow one that y'all will be seeing on here very soon, too. So they got some nice variety with it. So y'all check them out. I'll leave the link. Again, it's down below in the description. Now, um, the defense, the Baltimore Ravens defense. Gave up six points. Now, we talked about it before, but we got to talk about it again. Uh, we know Matabike every week, every single week, Patrick Queen every single week, Geno Stone every single week, their prices continue to rise up all the way. Those prices go up every week. Just the Matabike with the sack and just all the pressure. Uh, Patrick Queen with some really nice open field tackles. Geno Stone, the big stop on the two-point conversion. But even before then, that interception. And I saw somebody say, oh, man, it was fourth down. Why did Geno Stone intercept it? Like, why not? It's fourth down. I mean, getting the ball at the 20, like, why Why not? Go get your stats. Get your money. It's a blowout game. Like, no, pick that ball off, man. Pick it off because that officially gives it to you. Um, so, yeah, not, it, like, yeah, shout out to Geno Stone. But the Ravens defense, they, 
amazing. Brandon Stevens, who he had him again. He almost had a pick too, but he had him a game. Marlon Humphrey, he had a quiet game, but that's always good when your cornerbacks have a quiet game. Cause I don't really think Jared Goff threw to Marlon Humphrey very much. Now, toward the very end of the game, when Rocky Seen was out there. <laughs> I think Jared Goff got something personal with Rocky Seen, man, because he was going at him over and over and over and over. Rocky Seen got so frustrated. Amr St. Brown, he came over trying to push and shove Rocky Seen. Rocky Seen flipped him with ease and just kept it moving with ease. But the Ravens defense, I know, again, Ravens, the focal point for people will be Ravens offense this game, as I get it, because the offense have been a big talk this, this season because they have been shaky. They have been struggling and whatnot. Uh, but the defense, six points, man. To this Lions team, five, they were 5-1. Five and one. And in all of, their game, all of their wins were blowouts. Well, except the Chiefs, I think. But besides that, the rest of their wins were blowouts. Well, two score wins. So they, they've been taking care of business, but Ravens held it down. Jared Goff, 33 for 53 for 284 yards. He averaged 5.4 yards of completion. And, of course, through that pick to uh, Geno Stone. Now, what's funny is I said before the game, since Terrell Suggs was in the building, I said 5-5. Five, five. I said let's get, try, get at least five sacks. And let's also get at least five plays on offense to where they are 15 yards or more. And I'm just literally just finding out right now that the Baltimore Ravens got five sacks on Jared Goff. So that was a beautiful thing. As far as the, 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 the big plays of 15 yards or more, I'm not sure how many of those they got. Oh, well, I guess I can tell right here. Longest, Gus Edwards, one catch for 80 yards. There goes one. Zay Flowers, his longest catch was 46 yards. There goes another one. Mark Andrews, his longest catch was 22 yards. There goes another one. Patrick Ricard, his longest catch was 28 yards. There goes another one. Rashad Bateman, his longest catch was 20 yards. There goes another one. Odell Beckham Jr., his longest catch was 20 yards. There goes another one. So... Ravens blew my expectations out the water because just based off of catches alone, they got one, two, three, four, five, six catches of 15 yards or more. But then there were the runs, too, because Justice Hill's longest run was 27 yards and Gus Edwards' longest run was 20 yards. So they had eight plays of over 15 yards or more. So they exceeded what my hope was that they would do for 55 being in the building. So shout out to them Baltimore Ravens. But anyway, uh, looking at... The, the numbers for Detroit Lions as far as their rushing, they, they ran 14 times for 84 yards. Uh, they averaged six yards a carry, but they weren't really running too much because the game was out of reach. And when the game's out of reach, running ain't really going to do you much. And even some of these numbers here in the run game, probably a little inflated because there were a couple runs that they did at the very end of the game just to run the clock out. So they really weren't running the ball at all because they just really didn't have an opportunity to. Now, um, Amra St. Brown, he, Amonra St. Brown, excuse me, uh, he had 13 catches for 102 yards. Uh, he had 19 targets. So, <laughs> call for six. I'm trying to get you this ball, man. I'm, I'm trying. Uh, Jameson Williams, he had six targets, zero catches. And now there was one where he just straight up beat Rocky Seam from the jump, and that was toward the end of the game. But he dropped it. He dropped the touchdown. Cause that, that was definitely a touchdown. Jerry Goff put in a perfect spot, too. Dropped. So... It, it, was, uh, it was rough for him. Jared Goff, um, he was looking a little scared this game. He lost two fumbles, uh, and he, he ended up getting one back. But um, he, he, looked, he looked shaky at times. He was throwing the ball into the ground, the intentional grounders and whatnot. There was one fumble where he was, like, bobbling the ball and whatnot, and um, this just was not a great game for him at all. Um, I would definitely say I, I, I trust Lamar Jackson a lot more than I trust Jared Goff. I don't know where I heard that before. But anyway. Uh, the Ravens, they played a complete game today, which was nice. Um, offense obviously did their thing. Defense obviously did their thing. Special teams, they did their thing as well. Ravens, they, they did this from start to finish. Now, somebody asked on the stream, like, okay, are Ravens starting to find their identity? I hope they are starting to, um, but this cannot be the finish. Not saying that the Ravens can't and they won't play like this moving forward, but we have to see it moving forward. First, they, they asked that in the first half. So what we said, we got to see it in the second half too. And they showed it in the second half. They closed it out in the second half in a major way. But now we got to see it in the next game. And then we want to see it in the next game, in the next game, in the next game. And we know not every game is going to go like this. So having an expectation that every single game should go like this or will go like this, that's an unrealistic expectation. You're setting yourself up with the disappointment every single time. Um, but there, there should be more games like this. And I, I could expect there be to be more games like this. There's going to be some ugly games as well. Um, it's going to be a lot of everything in between, too. But this is a really, really good start. This is what I expected to happen against the Titans last week. 
Um, but it really was no surprise that it happened this week because Ravens do all this type of stuff where they, they are a really weird team and they have been for a long time to where they will struggle with this team, that team, and third team. But then a top team comes in and a lot of people expect, oh, man, Ravens about to lose this one. They about to get blown out and Ravens will completely flip the script. And that's exactly what they did today.